In this video, we're going to paint some Ducati Incubi. Coffee. Uh, let's go for it then. How's it going everyone? My name is Alan the Apathetic Fish and today we're going to paint some Drukhari Incubi. I am very excited for the 9th edition Drukhari Codex release and of course Incubi are phenomenal models which I'm also very excited to field in a game. I hope you're also excited and in this video I will be showing you how I'll be painting my Incubi from start to finish so you can follow along. I'm painting my Drukhari in blue but you can change the colors according to your own scheme. So, if you're ready, pick up your brushes and let's begin. We're going to start by using this Drukhari Incubus model, and it was prepared and primed with black primer. What I'm going to do now is add a layer of Cantor Blue. You can apply this layer either by brush or airbrush. I'm going to use Cantor Blue Air because I have it, and I will be base coating more models with the airbrush faster. I find the first base coat goes faster this way. I'm going to take my airbrush and add a little bit of airbrush thinner. Just about 10% of the total volume of paint we're using and then my counter blue air paint. It's thinned down for airbrush already but adding a little thinner will ensure the airbrush doesn't get clogged. I'm going to make some bubbles with the airbrush to mix them inside and test it on a piece of tissue. Now we're ready to base coat. Base coating is very easy. I set my pressure around 20 psi and start blasting air and carefully pulling on the trigger. I make three thin coats of this paint to make sure the opacity of the paint is right and no primer shows through in any parts that matter. You can leave a little shadow in the bottom parts by only applying a thin layer of blue and then continue base coating as a zenithal highlighting to leave shadows underneath. Once that's done, I'm going to use Black Templar to paint all of the black areas of the model. This is not meant to be transparent as a contrast paint, I just love Black Templar because it's easy to work with. I will add a couple layers on all of the suit areas of the model and all of the areas that are meant to be black, such as the sword, the gloves and anything else you want to be black. When painting my models, I don't usually highlight black, I will just leave it as it is. I will just focus more on the blues and other colors just to make the miniature look great. Now I'm going to switch to a size zero round brush from Red Grass and with the same black Templar, I'm going to paint this color into the recesses of the armor. An alternative is to give the whole model a wash of Nuln oil and then clean up with counter blue again, but I like applying the shadows manually into the recesses. Once we do that, there's going to be some mistakes and you can come back with the counter blue to push back those dark areas and clean up. You should have a model that looks something like this. Here I'm using a little counter blue to fix some mistakes before moving to the next step. Now I'm going to paint the helmet with white. To do this, I will start with a layer of Celestra Grey. Make sure to thin all of your colors down, but especially this one, since it's easy to apply a thick layer of this color and destroy the detail. Apply two thin patchy layers for better results. Continuing to add color, I'm going to paint the horns brown with scale 75 Dubai Brown. I am switching brands only because I love the matte finish on the scale 75 range. I want these colors to look super flat. These colors need a lot of shaking to apply properly though. You could use Citadel Mornfang Brown if you prefer. Once that's done I'm going to use some black metal as a very dark silver. You could use Iron Warriors but I'm going to use this one instead and I'm going to paint the edge of the blade only on this model. Then with scale 75 violet I will paint all of the fabric of the Incubus. You could use Citadel Sirius Purple if you prefer. Now I'm using Citadel Rune Lord Brass to paint all of the brass detail on my Incubus. I like this color very much as an accent to my dark color scheme, it looks great. 
With that done, we have most of the colors laid out on the miniature. I will start to add some shadows with washes. First, I'm going to use Nuln Oil as a thin layer over the helmet to add some dark shadows of gray. After this, with the same Nuln Oil, I'm going to paint some of this color into the recesses of the horns and the tips of the horns and the darkest places of the violet and any other area that would need it. Then with Rayclan Flesh Shade, I'm going to shade all of the brass areas to give them a warm shadow. Now comes the tricky part. Here I'm going to start paying attention to the blues with Dark Reaper. This color is going to go into all of the edges of the blue and it is very close to Cantor Blue so it won't look too noticeable at first but it makes a very evident improvement on the color scheme. Use your zero size brush and paint all of those edges as thin as you can and use the edge of the brush whenever you can. This is the most lengthy step. This is how the model looks after hitting all the edges. It already looks very good and you can leave it here if you want. I am going to add a couple more highlights. Following the previous step, I'm going to use Thunderhawk Blue and this time again doing a very thin edge highlight but only on the areas that would catch light or that are facing up. The rest of the edges you can leave as they are. Just pay close attention to the spikes facing up and where the light would land on these edges. This is not going to take as much as the previous step. And to finish the armor, I'm going to use a tiny bit of Fenrisian gray. And with this color, I'm only touching the sharpest edges and corners of the armor. Just adding a small dot of this color as an extreme highlight on the parts that catch the most light. Once the armor is finished, I'm going to grab a little more of the Celestial Grey still on the palette and I'm going to clean up the helmet parts, just leaving the recesses and shadows on the previous color. Being very careful not to get into the recesses. Then to add a lot more brightness, I'm going to use Ulthu and Grey to continue highlighting. This color is going to go on over 80% or a little more of the area on the areas that are catching light, leaving a little of the previous color behind. And to finish the white, I'm going to use scale 75 white. It was the white that I had on hand. You can use any white color you want. With this, I'm only edge highlighting the edges that catch the most light on the mask. And with that, the white is done. Moving on to painting the bone, I will add a little bit of Thar Brown to the palette next to the Dubai Brown and mix them together. I want to find a color slightly brighter than Dubai Brown and use that to start working my way up to the bone color. I will add this color on most of the horn leaving the tips in the original color. Moving down the bone, I will add a little bit more Thar Brown to the mix and continue highlighting leaving layers of the darker color behind. The more you do these, the smoother the transition will be. This model is a standard color scheme for me, not display quality or competition, but it's good enough that it looks great on the battlefield and that I can paint a whole army like this. I'm not concerned to blend these colors flawlessly. Continue to add layers until you can add pure Thar Brown to the horns and add this to at least 50% of the total area of the horn. To finish the horns, I will add some Mojave White to the palette and edge highlight those edges with the edge of the brush. Very careful to leave all of the colors behind showing. I will continue to highlight the violet adding a little scale 75 light skin to the violet. Just enough to make a highlight color version. I don't have a clear ratio to explain this well to you, but it needs to go up slightly on brightness to add to the exposed parts of the fabric and make them stand out a little more. Then adding a little more light skin to the mix, I'm going to use this color on the very edges where most light hits the fabric to give it an extreme highlight. I will be doing a green accent color on my color scheme as I will probably run this in Cubi with Poison Tongue. I will use warp lining to color all of the gems around the model and to base coat those eyes. After that, I'm going to use Mood Green to color the center of the eye. 
A small dot is enough to make them look very bright. With the same mood green watered down just slightly more, I am going to paint the runes on the blade. Just let this color sink into those details and very quickly before it dries, wipe the excess paint with your finger to leave them perfectly painted in bright green. Here I forgot to paint some of the green cables around the armor. I like painting these green and they need a base coat of warpstone glow before highlighting with moot green. We're very close to finishing, I am going to use a little more of the Rune Lord brass to clean up a little of the brass areas and make them shiny again. Just a touch on those places where the wash made them dull down a little bit. Following that up with a little Vallejo model color basalt gray, I wanted to use a more subtle etching gray but I couldn't find it so this one will work fine. Just add a small highlight to some black areas where most light hits and with the edge of the brush on the black parts of the blade. And to finish this model the last thing I did was to add a nice extreme highlight of speed metal to the edge of the blade to make it look extra sharp. And this is the finished model. This is the way I've been painting most of my Drukhari lately and having myself around 1500 points of Cabal and Witch Cult core models already painted. I feel very excited for the new Codex release and to continue painting a lot more models for them. This scheme looks great and other than being a little time consuming it's not too difficult to paint. That is all for this video, thank you very much for watching, I hope you find it useful and if you liked the end result give me a like, comment below letting me know what you think and subscribe to the channel clicking the bell to get notified whenever I upload more videos. Thank you so much for watching, I hope to see you in the next video and remember to get better we need to try new things, practice a lot and never stop painting.